Ladies and gentlemen, Byron Pitts. Good afternoon. I first met my dear friend Judy Smith in the same way many of you first met her, on television. There she was, standing quietly, elegantly, as, as the sentry, the steel spine holding up one of America's power brokers who had found himself on the wrong side of some crisis. There is this catchy phrase all of us, especially those of you in marketing, know all too well. The Hollywood version goes something like this. Who are you going to call when you're all alone? Pick up the phone and call. That's the fictional version. In the real world, and you've got real problems and you're alone, who are you going to call? For the past 25 years, the one name on everyone's short list is Judy A. Smith. Judy is the founder and president of Smith & Company, a strategic advisory firm with offices in Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, and here in New York City. Her client list expands, spans the globe in every category, from Iran-Contra to Enron, General Petraeus to the Sony Corporation, politicians, athletes, celebrities, entire countries. When the powerful have a problem to fix, they call the fixer. No smoke and mirrors, intelligence, integrity, legal and political acumen. Her talent's so rare you can make an award-winning primetime hot and sexy television series out of it. <laughs> Along with her demanding day job, Judy is co-executive producer of the ABC hit show, Scandal. She served as deputy press secretary to President George H.W. Bush, a bachelor of science degree from Boston University, a law degree from American University, more impressive than her resume to those of us who love and admire this great woman. It is her kind heart and her resilient spirit we admire most. Books have been written about successful people who learn to say no. No, I'll take a pass on that. My passion is this. But the remarkably successful, and by every measure, Judy and all the women who have gathered, we've gathered to honor, are remarkable. Judy learned to ignore no. No, you shouldn't start your own firm. Too dangerous. Can't be done. No, you're a black woman who seeks to be successful in an industry dominated by white men and a growing number of white women. No, you come from humble means. You can't possibly live a bold life. Judy A. Smith is a humble spirit who lives her truth boldly. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to call her my friend and to introduce her to you now, Judy A. Smith. That was a big setup there. <laughs> I really got nothing after that, I, I, I got to tell you. Um, let me just say, really, it's truly uh, an honor and a privilege to be, to be recognized by such an important organization as uh, Women in Communications. You know, certainly when one starts their career, even before that, you never imagine um, getting an award such as this or, you know, becoming the uh, president's dep deputy press secretary, or you know, having a, a show inspired by your crisis work. Um, and by the way, I should say this because this was asked by one of our scholarship recipients. I did not have sex with the president, just in case. <laughs> I just want to clarify that in case there was any mistake about that. I mean, look, you know, life unfolds in this really unexpected ways. You know, when you look back, you really do think that there are clues, you know, and, and from that you learn to develop this passion and, and that really begins to show you what your life will be like. And sometimes I have to say it's not under that, you know, that career lens. Um, I have a very good friend that I've known since I was four years old and, um, she calls me Pocahontas and I call her Beanhead. And um, she reminded me, you know, I asked her one time, I said, well, how did I, how did I get involved in this crisis, this fixer thing? And she reminded me that, um, that I have been doing it all my life. She reminded me of a situation, I think we were around 10 or 11, and in the neighborhood um, there was this really sort of hot couple, uh, Angela and Omar. And um, they broke up. 
And so because they bro up, broke up, the neighborhood, everybody stopped playing. And the reason why they stopped playing is because you couldn't figure out what side to take. So for five or six days, there was no after school programs, no playing. So I decided I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. So I got them together and sat down and brokered a peace treaty <laughs> and said, the two of you need to get back together because the neighborhood is not going to make it. And so thank God they got back together. But you know, I've always sort of had this for me of um, really making a difference in other people's lives. And as I said, it's the kind of things that you become uh, passionate about and that grows on you. And I think one of the things that I've learned oftentimes that you know, communications chose me. Um, I didn't choose it. And you know, I guess part of the reason why I'm in it because I just sort of have a big mouth and can't keep it shut. But, but this need, I think, to speak for others and to um, help and assist um, has always been a part of who I am. And uh, controversy over the years has seemed to find me. Um, and, um, and it chose me, basically. And I, I would say that you know, we often talk about, and you know, we talk about the fixer. I think now in the country that we're at a point where there is, um, I think, a lot of uh, dissension, a lot of distrust, and a lot of conflict. And I think too often we always readily accept limitations. There are always challenges, I think, especially for women, and in particular for minorities. But I often say that excellence is a great equalizer. And that is something that I really strive for myself. So I would encourage all of us, because we all sort of have the power um, to be uh, a fixer, because there's a lot going on that needs fixing. So thank you very much. I appreciate the honor. Thank you.